Hello, my name is Tegu Oh from Seoul National University. Today's talk is about emergence of topological phenomena in strained pyrochloroethylene film films. Before beginning, I want to thank to my collaborators, especially Dr. Oh Jin Kim and Professor Bom Jung Yang and Professor Taewon Lo. This is the contents of my talk. First, I'll introduce the vial semimetal in pyrochloroethylene antifilament. The physics in condensed matter is largely determined by the electronic correlation and spin of coupling. When we denote the spin of coupling as lambda and electronic correlation as u, we can draw such 2D phase diagram. The region where we're interested in is here where lambda and u are comparable to the bandwidth because in this region, correlated topological phases like while semi-metal, axon insulator, and spin liquid can exist. Our subject, pyrochloridate or PI, is in this region, so we are going to study this material. Let me introduce PI antiferromagnet shortly. The chemical formula of PI is R2IR207, where R is the bearers. The structure looks like this. It is composed of two chains of corner shearing tetrahedrons, uh, which are composed of rare earths and iridium ions. When temperature goes down, uh, the iridium spin have an antiferromagnetic order, which is called all-in all-out order. In this order, every, every spin points outward or inward at the same time. The feature of PI antiferromagnet is uh, that it is the first material that bio semimetal is predicted to be exist. However, in the real material, uh, the smoking gun evidence is still absent. The first reason is that the ground state is insulating. This 2D phase diagram is about the ionic radius and temperature. Uh, when one changes the errors and find the phases, only one can find the magnetic insulator in, as a ground state. Furthermore, in a theory, the bio semimetal can exist only very in a small region in this green area. Therefore, in this in, in a real material, one cannot find bio semimetal easily. Although the bio semimetal exists in this system, we cannot detect it easily because of the cubic symmetry. The feature of bio semimetal is to have an anomalous hole effect. However, the anomalous hole conductivity is suppressed when the cubic symmetry exists. Therefore, although the wild semimetal exists in the system, we cannot detect the signal easily. In order to find wild semimetal in this material, we should overcome these two difficulties. We can overcome the two difficulties by using the strain. First, the strain can break the cubic symmetry. Therefore, if the system is vial semi-metal, then we can detect the signal like an anomalous hole effect. Furthermore, by strain, the magnetic structure changes. Therefore, we can reduce the window of the insulating ground state and widen up the window for topological semi-metals. Therefore, this is the goal of our work. Then, I'm going to talk about what we have done in this work. In favor of Dr. Wu Jin Kim, we can raise the strain that we want to eat into a 17 film. Here's the data. In this XRD data and STM data, we can see a clear interface between the substrate and the we want to eat into a 17 film. Furthermore, this Fourier transformed data shows that a compressive strain about 1% is applied to the system. With a sample, we can measure the transport phenomena. First, we can measure the temperature against the resistivity. This black line is for lex film and this orange line is for strained film. You can see the strained film is much semi-metallic than the lex film. This is because in Harvard model, the lex film is insulator. On the other hand, the 1% strained film should show some electrons and hole pockets in the system. Therefore, the strain makes the system semi-metallic. 
using the Hubbard model, we can draw 2D mean field phase diagram like this in terms of strain in Hubbard repulsion. First, you can notice that the insulating ground state can be semi-metallic when the strain is applied stronger, and at last, we can reach at the wild semi-metal like this. So, we can expect that when we apply more strain to the film, we can find the wild semi-metal. We also measure the anomalous soil conductivity in terms of the, of the field. And here again, the black line is the relaxed film and the orange line is the strained film. Even at the zero, zero field, the strained film shows uh, 20 times larger core conductivity than the relaxed film. This is because the cubic symmetry prohibits the core conductivity in the relaxed film while in the strain film, the cubic symmetry is broken, therefore the anomalous hole conductivity is finite. Also, the anomalous hole conductivity shows uh, a very unique phenomenon called antihysteresis. In user hysteresis, it involves the, the, uh, uh, the domain switching, therefore the direction usually looks like this. However, in our system, the direction is reversed. We should explain this phenomena. To explain this phenomena, uh, we analyze the temperature dependence of the anomalous hole effect. There are largely two important temperature scale, 30 Kelvin and 15 Kelvin, where iridium and neodymium spin ordering temperature. In the first region over 30 Kelvin, there is no anomalous hole conductivity at all. In the second region between 30 Kelvin and 15 Kelvin, uh, there is finite anomalous hole conductivity, but there is no hysteresis or low spontaneous hole conductivity at all. Finally, uh, below 15 Kelvin, uh, there, there is finite spontaneous hole conductivity with an antihysteresis. Therefore, we think we conclude that the behavior of anomalous hole conductivity is very closely related to neodymium and iridium spin orderings. In favor of this conclusion, we can use some phenomenological model to explain the antihysteresis of the an anomalous hole conductivity. The anomalous hole conductivity can be divided into the iridium spin ordering contribution and the neodymium spin ordering contribution. Uh, it has been known that the iridium spin has a large coercive field by itself. Therefore, we just use some monotonic H dependence, which is a green line here. And for the neodymium spin ordering contribution, it has a large Zeeman energy. Therefore, uh, it can induce some domain switching. So we adopt the hysteretic H dependence with a finite spontaneous hole conductivity. And here, the blue line. When the sweep direction is this, we add this green line and this blue line, which is a user hysteresis graph. Then we can find the antihysteretic behavior. On the other hand, the sweep direction is reversed. We add this green graph with this blue graph, then we can find another antihysteretic behavior. Therefore, the antihysteresis can be explained by the monotonic and usual hysteretic behavior whose signs are opposite. Although we now know that the spontaneous hole conductivity is closely related to the, the neodymium ordering, we still don't know the origin of it. Uh, the conventional wisdom says that the spontaneous hole conductivity is proportional to the magnetization, so we also measure the magnetization in the system. However, at the zero field, the magnetization is zero, though the, still the spontaneous hole conductivity is finite. Therefore, we expect that uh, there is a new order other than the magnetization itself.
Therefore, we adopt the concept of cluster magnetic multiples, which is a classification of every possible uh, magnetic structures in the system by a group theory. It is known that when we uh, classify the magnetic structure like this, uh, among these, the uh, the magnetic multiple whose symmetry is same as the anomalous hole conductivity can only give the anomalous hole effect. For example, the all in all out order here, this order, ordering it has a different symmetry uh, from anomalous hole conductivity, therefore, it does not give any anomalous hole effect. On the other hand, the dipole, which is just a ferromagnetic order, and this new order called T1 octopole, uh, give rise to anomalous hole effect because their symmetry is the same as anomalous hole conductivity. In our system, however, the magnetization is absent. Therefore, the dipole is uh, not the candidate of our system. Therefore, we might expect that T1 octopole only give rise to the anomalous hole conductivity without any magnetization. Therefore, we should study that T1 octopole can be used in the strain field. In fact, when the uh, when, when we apply the strain in all-in-all out ordering, the spin canted from all-in-all out. Therefore, the T1 octopole can arise. This can be shown by the spin model calculation. We uh, put the various terms like this, and here's the relaxed film result, and this is a 1% strain result. Here, omega is the T1 octopole. When relaxed film, there is no T1 octopole at zero field. On the other hand, in 1% strain film, T1 octopole is finite. Therefore, we clearly see that the a strain can control the higher length magnetic multiples like T1 octopole and its, its associated anomalous hole effect. Let me conclude my talk. First, we successfully grow the in situ strain neodymium 2, iridium 2, 7 thin fill. So therefore, we can build a new playground for the lower topological phases. Also, we show that we the strain can control the higher length magnetic multiples in associated topological phases and phenomena. In the future, we expect that uh, we can observe the strain-induced topological phase transition. Thank you for listening.